My name is Jeff Barron. I am a victim of bankruptcy court issues, civil court issues, and attorney misconduct. For the past two years, I've been forced to live in a personal receivership. All of my property has been seized, and I've been forbidden from hiring a lawyer to defend myself. I've been prohibited from earning money, from traveling free freely, from entering into transactions, and from owning anything. I've not been accused of any crime, have never filed bankruptcy, never lost any lawsuit, and never had any judgments against me. Since I'm prohibited from hiring legal counsel, I'm afraid to say very much about this because I don't want to violate any court orders, and I don't have anyone, any kind of legal counsel to advise me on what I'm allowed to say and what I'm not supposed to say. Now, after two years, a lawyer has been appointed in my case for a very small portion of the case, but I'm still prohibited from hiring a lawyer to deal with the overall receivership issues, which are the majority of my case. I hope that what's happened to me will never happen to anyone else in our country. Federal judge declares constitution void, threatens civil defendant with death. Submitted by John Griffin. Most Americans believe that we have a reasonably fair justice system with scholarly judges at the helm. Well, how about a federal judge who suspends the Constitution, confiscates all of a litigant's assets, orders him not to hire defense counsel, and pronounces his orders enforceable by death? That's exactly what federal judge Royal Ferguson did to Internet pioneer Jeff Barron, in a case that, New York lawyer David Rolkin says is the most outrageous denial of a person's basic constitutional and human rights in this country since the abolition of slavery. In the Texas case, Judge Ferguson sentenced Barron to an unprecedented human receivership to enable the judge's lawyers to loot Barron's juvenile diabetes research trust. His offense? Barron was accused of not paying his lawyers enough money charges that were later proven to be completely fabricated. The decision is historic, a human being has not been placed in a receivership since slavery ended in 1865. During one of the hearings, and prior to an appellate court ruling that Judge Ferguson abused his discretion, Ferguson reminded Barron of his power. I have the full force of the Navy, Army, and Marines behind me. You are a fool, a fool, a fool to screw with a federal judge, and if you don't understand that, I can make you understand it. Background Barron is an internet pioneer who, on a shoestring budget invented technology competitive with Google during the early days of the internet, according to the Daily Caller. He became incredibly successful and had websites with over 1 million visitors per day and monthly traffic of 50 million. Barron earmarked nearly all of his earned wealth to finding a cure for juvenile, type 1, diabetes a disease afflicting Barron since early childhood. His success attracted attention, and he was soon enticed by another investor who promised to develop a search engine that would eclipse Google if Barron would partner with him. That relationship soured fast when the investor embezzled $8 million, prompting Barron to sue for recovery. After this, the partner employed an army of lawyers with Barron's stolen wealth and sued Barron six times, attempting to take the rest of the company's assets. The partner lost all six times, according to World Net Daily. When the partner sued a seventh time, Ferguson became the judge in charge. Ferguson forced Barron to settle the case on unfavorable terms. After the settlement was completed, Ferguson held a private, off-record meeting with Barron's adversaries where the judge inexplicably put Barron into a human receivership, seizing everything Barron owned from his home to his cell phone. Ferguson also indefinitely suspended most of Barron's civil liberties. Apparently, there is a lot of money to be had here, Ferguson said. Whether it's a receiver, judgment, or whatever, he's going to be accountable unless he wants to live on a desert island somewhere and escape the clutches of the U.S. Army and the Navy and the Marines and the Air Force and the U.S. Marshals. At another hearing where Ferguson thought that Barron might appeal his rulings, he responded with a tirade. You want to challenge the court order, I have the marshals behind me. I can come to your house, pick you up, 
put you in jail. I can seize your property, do anything I need to do to enforce my orders. So any failure to comply with that order is contempt, punishable with lots of dollars, punishable by possible jail, death. Rolkin, an accomplished New York federal attorney says, the only accurate analogy to Barron's situation while under the receiver's control is that he became an inmate at Guantanamo Bay. According to the appellate court, the judge's orders were so draconian that all of Barron's property was seized and his personal mail was diverted. Barron, a type 1 diabetic, had to obtain approval from the court before seeking medical treatment. The result was that Ferguson illegally forced Barron to unpaid labor for years, under the cloak of absolute immunity which all federal judges enjoy. Ferguson thundered. This proceeding is going on and on and on until Mr. Barron has nothing. I mean actually everything is depleted. I gather that Mr. Barron is worth a lot of money. But it may be that we sell all the domain names. We may sell all of his stock. We may cash in all of his CDs, and we may seize all of his bank accounts. Professor Ben Stein recently commented to Fox News that Americans are becoming powerless against abuse of power by Stalinist, liberal judges who are dictators in black robes. The judiciary is out of control, not bound by anything except themselves. Said Stein. Judges don't have to be bound by the Constitution or the law. While sounding fantastic and far-fetched, Barron's situation is becoming more commonplace, as California lawyer Conrad Herring explains, what happened to Barron, can happen to anyone. The system is obviously broken. Former House Majority Leader Tom DeLay, an authority on judicial corruption himself, called for Judge Ferguson's impeachment, explaining. I've found case after case after case where our judiciary is being used and misused, whether it be politicians misusing the courts to stop people from giving money to campaigns, or this Jeff Barron situation where the federal government, through the federal judiciary, has illegally confiscated someone's property and destroyed their lives because they have a vendetta against them. The scene of judges in Hawaii and the California Ninth Circuit usurping President Trump's power in the area of national security serves as a reminder of a much broader and increasingly growing problem. While the president has an army of lawyers at his disposal to keep rogue and activist judges in check, most Americans are far more at risk and powerless to defend themselves when they become targets personally. An average American finds himself at the mercy of a radical or corrupt judge bent on inflicting harm and is stuck with the judge's tyrannical commandments without recourse. Conrad Herring observes. The judicial system is prohibitively expensive for most citizens. When a judge acts beyond his or her authority, and sometimes abuses that authority as in the case of Jeff Barron, there is often little recourse unless a lawyer is willing to work pro bono to defend and protect the citizens' rights. The abuse in the Barron receivership case was doubly egregious because it was initiated by unethical lawyers. Rather than hold these lawyers accountable, the judge in the case allowed them to thoroughly corrupt the legal process. Barron was stripped of most of his constitutional rights without due process, and then stripped of his assets. Although Barron was successful in his appeal of the unlawful receivership order, he is still today, five years later, fighting to recover the assets that were illegally taken from him. With a new day dawning in America, Barron is turning his efforts toward making America great again. His new Internet Freedom Project, IFP, is leading the drive to restore America's stewardship of the Internet. Hey, Charlotte County. This is Charlotte County Cop Watch, and uh, I wanted to explain what fair use is. Uh, you can use pieces of your news articles uh, if you're doing it for news reporting, you have commentary, and you're doing it for education purposes. So that's what fair use is, uh, as you can see right here. Another reason why I wanted to make this video is to uh, let you know I have just joined with Patreon. A nice thing with uh, Patreon, I make no money on YouTube. They took the money away years ago. And uh, so this is another way to give. And, uh, and it's a nice thing, too, because you can give monthly. Uh, you can give a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, whatever. I do, I do four to five hours a day 
on uh, trying to wake the sheeple up on how corrupt it is and different ways that you can fight the corruption. Uh, so Patreon is a way that you can do it. And then, of course, the old way still is still there. Donate to Sheriff County Cop Watch with PayPal or uh, credit card. So keep that in mind. Four to five hours a day. I make no money, but the corruption happened to me, and I'm sick of it, so I'm trying to wake people up. Uh, but my wife would love it if some, uh, you know, if we could get some help out there. There's 47,000 subscribers. Just think if each one of you subscribers just gave a, uh, let's say, a, a, actually, yes, a dollar a month. 47,000 subscribers gave a dollar a month. Uh, that would be awesome. That's not going to happen. But anyways, that would be great if it did happen. But, uh. You know, do the math in your head. Just think about it. Uh, like I said, four to five hours a day, I get no money from YouTube. YouTube has gone nuts. You can't do anything anymore. They're taking the money away everywhere. So these are a couple different ways that you can still help out with all this time that I put in. And as you know, I'm in a special situation where, it, you know, at least I can do it. You know, four to five hours a day. We have a cleaning company during the day. That's what allows me to do this, and we're debt-free. So... This is my hobby. Uh, I don't go fishing and all that other crap. I try to save the world. So help me out to make the wife happy, man. In fact, if you guys did give a dollar a day, and there was 47,000 of you, and you did it, and each of you gave a dollar, and that was every month, oh my god, uh, yes, I could quit. I could start suing them. Uh, another idea, too, that we have is... Uh, you know, if I got, you know, some funds, we could actually contact everyone that has been ticketed and or arrested and put in jail and start sending them postcards to let them know we're here and to see if everything went all right and uh, if it didn't, uh, find out their story. So we could even do more investigations and more lawsuits. Lawsuits take money. So just think about that. Uh, you know, 47,000 of you so far right now, you know, a dollar a day. I mean, a dollar a month on Patreon, or five dollars a month on Patreon, ten, twenty, whatever. Just do the math in your head, help out. This is a lot of work every single day. Thanks.